Alrighty then, so, hello, um, it's been a while since I streamed and recorded this, had a bunch of stuff to do, so, but we are back, um, we'll continue <coughs> with uh, Bubble Nebula processing, this is not gonna be a long session, try to cover um, the convolution I think today <coughs> just getting something sorted for his processing Okay, so we have this test image previously. We have uh, Starless H Alpha, so let's just uh, rename it. It's called Starless. And we want to have uh, the version of the stars for the convolution. Oops. All right, there we go. And we have uh, all three. Um, I'll leave the fixing off. Um, well, making the the all three starless uh, for later. want to do the convolution today okay 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 channel for starless star masks not need this, it's bad. Um, don't think we need this either. Okay. PG Starless. Oh, so yeah, uh, what I tried to do before, um, well, the last time I said that I'll try to do the um, uh, drizzle integration. I think it. It turned out okay, and uh, I might even use it. Um, just need to apply some cropping to have same field of view, and let's just compare them. Zoom in, zoom in. Uh, difference is very, very, very subtle. Maybe I won't even use it doesn't look like there's enough of a difference apart for the stars being uh, less pixelated so eh. it doesn't look like there is any benefit Okay, so how we will be approaching the convolution? Uh, we need a PSF uh, image for uh, the convolution process. I have this prepared uh, for my new project uh, in uh, process integration uh, process uh, icons. So we need a PSF, and I have these. Uh, cool scripts which help me out and I'll just uh, try to use the generated PSF image um, it 
saves a lot of time and uh, <laughs> I haven't seen any side effects from using this instead of just uh, picking the, all the stores manually so it saves a lot of time all right we have PSF we'll start uh, with um, my usual uh, flow of uh, not using any deringing we'll see what we get and then decide what to do next and I'll just use uh, what I use for defaults for wavelet, wavelet regularization so uh, yeah Supply there. There we go. So the usual artifacts of the rings around the stars. Nothing unusual. The convolution is working very nicely. Um, I want to see what kind of an effect uh, the increased uh, iteration count will give. So let's try 60. There's some slight benefit in the dark areas. Um, other than that, doesn't really matter. <coughs> well, apart for increased artifacts. The background itself doesn't it, it is not hit much by uh, convolution, so the noise is not exaggerated more than it should be. So that means that we could try and going down with these settings uh, to hit the to the, hit the part where uh, it is affected and uh, have some middle ground. So we don't just settle on the okay result, but uh, the best one. Oh, I forgot the uh, uh, reduced iterations to 30. There's some posterization here, I see, but uh, I'm not sure where that's coming from. Well, noise is still not exaggerated, so that's good. And I, now after reducing the noise threshold, I can see some increase in sharpness on, in the high signal areas. That's good. I think it could go lower even. Let's try this. Uh, reduced iteration count. So the increased iteration count is not gonna, giving any uh, benefit anymore. From what I can see, so I'll just use 30. Uh, 
I really like the increase in sharpness of the overall image. So this is this is perfect uh, image for the convolution. Alright, so um, we could try our decent wavelet layers to three, for example, and just reduce the threshold once more. And see if that gives any effect. Alright, now I'm seeing some artifacts uh, of the noise. Oh, this is getting worse, so that's too much. Um, I'll just keep the five layers and uh, and uh, high thresholds. All right, so that's pretty much it. But uh, I'm going to create a mask, uh, well, range mask. Uh, because there is no point in uh, deconvolving the whole background. There, there was a new version of Pixinsight released, uh, which uh, adds um, find option here. Well, filter more than find. I should update the Pixinsight, but I heard about some issues with some processes so I'm hesitant and uh, upgrading it so maybe a bit later All right so this is the range mask and we'll we need to have uh, the linear uh, the, the image not in linear state for it to work best uh, what do we want I think we should try including these areas to the deconvolution as well. So something like, something like that. Stronger range mask. Oh, this is almost taking up all image. Uh, mm. yeah, okay, what? Whatever. Let's just use this. We have all well, the wisps here everywhere, so maybe the convolution will give some benefit to that. Maybe they'll get sharper. We'll see. It's gonna take <coughs> a minute or two, I guess. Well, 30 iterations is not that bad. Jonathan, yep, I'm back. Problem 
probably just for another 45 minutes. Not a long session today. Not sure when I'll get back to it. Maybe, maybe a couple of times this week, but not sure. I need to be in the mood to process the images. state so oops gotta redo that Next step will be fixing up the artifacts introduced by deconvolution without the ringing option. I'll just show quickly what result we get with uh, um, no deringing option and um, the, the my method with, where we replace the stars back. So just for comparison and why I use uh, this method. Okay, so I, as I used the deconvolution on more than the high signal areas, I'm getting some issues with noise in the lower signal areas, and I reduced the noise threshold, and uh, this is the reason why I'm getting issues with the noise. It's getting uh, clumped. Uh, <coughs> it's getting separated in this bigger chunks or groups of uh, noise it's uh, not something I want to have so I think I'll just have to uh, redo this uh, maybe with default options
infinitely better not getting those issues I have had previously so that's good alright so now to fill the stars we need uh, the star mask size of that star mask. As, as the uh, rings around the stars are usually larger than the stars were previously, so um, this star mask will not cover uh, the areas around the, the stars. Um, to increase the stars the star mask um, will use uh, morphological transformation with modulation 9.5 there we go voila and we have this uh, I don't know, ugly Delation introduced this these artifacts to the stars in the star mask, which uh, we can fix with using convolution. So, yeah. I just default settings works, I guess. As you can see, they, that ugly. From the brighter to the uh, grayer part of the star, it's now gone. Let's see how it looks like from here. You can see that <coughs> the, the star mass now encompasses the larger part of the area around star. Um, oh, we probably want to increase intensity of the star mask and so we wouldn't have to use pixel map uh, that much Just replace the stars with pixel math. There we go. We'll probably want more, one more pass on this as uh, the star mask is not, it's opaque a bit, so uh, it does not replace everything in one go. looks like um, before fixing the issues and after uh, oops can 
let's see. It doesn't even. It's not even noticeable that there were any ad effects before. How's uh, the sound now? Is it better? Now it should be better, I guess. Okay, so, and now just to compare how the image uh, looks like when uh, we are using the, the the ringing options. Um, we need to clone the non-deconvolved image. Get rid of that, get rid of this. Alright, good. And just for comparison's sake, this is how the non deconvolved image and the deconvolved image compares to, to each other. Huge difference, huge difference. All right, now let's stick to ringing. It will probably be somewhere around this or higher. Um, let's see. Um, bit higher, I guess. Zero point one. Oh, that's too much, I guess. <laughs> um, maybe lower then. And okay, so when I'm talking about uh, warm is introduced by the convolution in somebody's image, this is what I'm talking about. These are warmies. <laughs> this is the ugly stuff. This is uh, the convolution overdone. Oh, I just forgot to undo. Forgot it's not a preview. So yeah. <coughs> and let's use this. Okay, maybe a little bit higher still and let's introduce global bright of point one zero zero one. Oh yeah, that's the ugly stuff and I forgot to undo it. Uh don't do the convolution two times in a row. I guess all this is more or less uh, what Usual deconvolution using the ringing look would uh, look like, I guess. Um, there is that that big star has uh, ringing, so you would play around with settings a bit more, but in the end, the result would be this. And just to compare to what we get uh, when the image is uh, deconvolved without the ringing. And, uh, and the stars are replaced, and the image would do ringing. As you can see, especially these areas are looking like bright uh, ringing, the 
the warm is I'm talking about usually, and the sharpness of the overall image is less, well, lower. The dark areas are not involved. In the end, the difference is very subtle, but uh, it's uh, it's noticeable. And I always notice these issues with the bright uh, warmies, and it just doesn't look good. Okay, so we have a deconvolved image, I guess. It's not that hard to do it. Um, what do we want to do next? Well, I guess we could just um, fix up the O3 image and get rid of the stars here using its own uh, star mask. So I'll just uh, use the Stratton tool I used for H alpha I guess or let's just see how the advanced star mask script uh, handles this image uh, it doesn't handle it well it takes up the bubble itself as a star so unusable on this image because uh, it's quite bright and you, you can even see the in H alpha image when it's not stretched you can see that it is uh, really bright this area and the bubble itself so let's use Stratum um, we will need uh, save it as diff image I guess yeah let's save it as diff and 16 bit because no other software wants to handle a high bit diff images properly so for some reason apart from pix inside <coughs> okay so there let's remove stars Stars be gone. Right, remove yeah, this one and save this image here and then get back here. Okay, 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 okay. Let's clip the background. stretch 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 I'm 
and I guess some more clipping is required. Okay, I think this is good enough. Let's use convolution. Let's assume that the same settings will work as well. Yeah, they do, more or less. Um, yeah, and then this. Let's see if all the stars are colored. More or less, there aren't many artifacts either, so... Ah, okay, so we have some issues here. These are not the stars. It will be easier to see here. Alright, so we'll need to fix that. be fixing that the same way we did with the uh, H-alpha image, so to just clone stamp the artifacts we don't want uh, using the black here, um, target view, source view, and let's go. Not star, not star, definitely not. This is not the star either. That's fine, I guess. Still some left. Okay, more or less fine, I guess. Alright, let's just run the defect map then. Okay, that was quick. Alright, so we got rid of the stars. Uh, come on. Artifact here. Uh, we'll need to fix that up, I guess. Um, we'll need to fix up a lot of the artifacts by, created by the larger stars in the background, so 
We'll just uh, grab the clone stem and fix everything up manually. Yeah, that doesn't work. We'll just need to fix that up in the star mask. Okay, okay. Am I making a starless image? Yes, I am. I have made the H alpha starless and I'm now continuing on with the O3 starless. I'll just need to get rid of those spikes as well there, I guess, with the clone stamp. Right, so target view, source view. Um, not right. Target here, source. Should be better now. Ah, still getting this. I'll just try to fix this with this clone stamp. This doesn't really matter as we'll be using uh, all three only for uh, by color image, and we'll still uh, smooth it out with noise reduction quite strongly. So yeah, it won't be noticeable. Right, let's use bigger brush for those bigger stars. I'll just get rid of them brighter uh, halos only 
doesn't matter for everything. The Latina stuff also doesn't matter. We'll get nuked with noise reduction. Just do not want to start creating color and where it does not exist. So just gotta be careful of those gradients and uh, strongest signal areas. I think I might have nicked some gradient here. Yeah, let's just redo this. Yeah, this should be fine. Okay, okay, so how this image is going to be constructed? What bands map to what color and lum? Luminance will be H alpha, and this is gonna be a bicolor image, so I'll be using this pixel map expression for uh, gen generating the uh, color image. Um, it looks like this. Basically, what it does is. Uh, takes the strongest parts of the uh, channel uh, and uses them in the respective uh, color um, oh, invert some stuff etc uh, etc et and um, combines the color that channels if uh, if the if the channel is uh, not that strong in some band etc. Okay, so we have the starless O3. What could we do next is well, we can just I guess we should do a nice reduction for both of the starless images. Oh, how that's going to look like. I can do a, do a lot of stuff with pixel math. I don't know half of it. There are some people who are creating some crazy stuff using pixel math. <coughs> Alright, so we need the luminance mask. I'll just use uh, MMT noise reduction for the color images because I don't care about the details. If I uh, for the H alpha that will be used as luminance, I'll 
probably try using TGV denoise uh, along with MMT just to keep uh, most of the well as as much as possible uh, of the signal and the noise reduction itself is not really going to be strong or maybe it won't be even necessary for H alpha because it's quite strong signal in there. We'll see. So for now I want to I want to uh, create the luminance mask for O3. It doesn't matter if we clip it. Just gonna get more noise reduction in those areas. So inverted luminance mask and stronger MMT settings with six layers. Let's see. I'm gonna take a minute or two, I guess. We are using quite a high uh, amount for noise reduction and then adaptive setting as well. So that's gonna nuke the details quite, quite strongly. But we care on about the um, details in the bubble itself and not even the smallest scale details. I just basically what we are doing is tone mapping, so uh, we need to have gradients in uh, in the areas, well, color gradients so that supposed to be in the places that it's supposed to be we don't care about the small scale stuff And second now. MMT is probably the longest running process, well, apart from the drizzle integration. For the luminance image, I usually try to use seven layers for. Uh, better control of the noise reduction but for a color image uh, it doesn't matter if it gets posterized a bit and it some less take just insane amount of time especially if it's a drizzled image just it, it's stupid amount of time like 40 minutes or something like that so I wouldn't be able to live streaming that all right here we go now we have this some modeling here uh, posterization as well yeah 
doesn't matter much on, unless it, it really affects uh, how it looks like when it's uh, properly stretched. So we can just go ahead and do that exactly right now. Now this time we don't really want to clip stuff. Or otherwise we'll have a color image with with uh, a strong uh, gradients in the background. As I want to boost the O3 call, O3 signal, I'll just use uh, cross transformation and use this S type of uh, curve. So we would uh, clip a little bit of the background and increase the signal increase the uh, strength of the signal in the mids and high Maybe a little bit too much. It just seems like it's getting clipped in the whites. Okay, let's leave it at that. probably want to have some uh, some noise reduction in this H alpha starless as well but I'm not gonna use the same settings so I'll just use the lower ones as the signal is here here is quite strong oh and we want probably to get rid of the spikes before So will be fine, I guess. Not that button.
The most exciting part, waiting while MT finishes. But after this, we will be able to just go and uh, create a bicolor image. Well, maybe before that I'll try it running a uh, local histogram normalization. Um, yeah, I think I'll do that. Just a little bit more of a little bit more contrast. Any second now. All right, here we go. Smoothing it out. All right. Let's stretch it properly this time. We'll have to use HDR, HDR, and multi-scale transform, just to get back to that central part where it's where it has very strong signal let's just try running it without any mask see what happens <clears throat> Ooh, that's interesting I kind of like it dramatic effect gives a little bit more 3d-ness to this I like this for the contrast boost. I think I'll leave it. We still need to get back to this. Um, how do we do that? I think with uh, range selection. Yep, 
this will work. This is good, but we need to have it a bit stronger. So. Okay, so let's increase now my iterations. I leave that uh, six layers. And that's way too much. Let's see what this combination of options gives us nope do not like that uh, I think I forgot to undo previously so, yeah oops yeah okay and this this works I think I'll just leave it like that and we can try running local norm uh, local histogram equalization just to see what it could give us kernel radius 128. Let's try that. And, uh, 1.4, and we don't want the full amount. We'll try running this on O3 image as well. I just want to have um, the H alpha and O3 as much different between themselves as possible to get the most colorful version possible oh that's interesting a bit too strong a bit too strong but I like the effect it creates even stronger 3d feeling of all of this so that's cool Right, so let's reduce contrast limit a little bit and the amount to 0 0.4 Okay, okay, okay Let's see what it does to O3. Oh, and we'll have to use HDM, HDRMT for this as well, as it has overblown the central part. Yeah, this doesn't do much, so I won't use this. But we need to use. Let's see. Ah, I have two iterations checked, so I'll have to reduce that to one. That doesn't give me effect I want. Let's try with the mask. Okay, I think this works well. So we could try and combine these. I'll just have to modify the formula and add the suffix of starless. There we go. 
there. Let's see. All right, that's good. That's good. Let's try just increasing the shadows a little bit more in here. Play with curves. It's looking cool. Bubble amidst the flames or something. I think I'll just combine with the uh, Starless H Alpha. I'm not sure if that's gonna give some benefit, but uh, maybe it will be easier to combine with the uh, version with the stars afterwards. Don't like this. Anyway, so we did the convolution today. Uh, we did the O3 starless. We did noise reduction for starless images. And we have final bicolor combination for the image. Um, I'll play with the uh, curves uh, next time. And we'll go on with uh, H alpha image uh, processing. So increasing contrast, maybe a little bit more sharpness. I'll stretching uh, the, the image and uh, noise reduction and combination so yeah that's it today and thanks for watching and see you next time bye bye